Hello viewers, welcome to Scientific Investing. So in this particular video, we are going to talk about a few interesting food and beverages company. Now, uh, this particular segment, it's not uh, new to us. And I like this segment. In fact, on our YouTube channel in last two years, we have covered two such companies. Uh, there is one company called DFM Foods, which we covered. I think we covered around 280. And then actually management wanted to delist the company and uh, it was a good bet uh, in terms of the delisting price because I think management came up with a delisting price of somewhere around 460. The another interesting company we had covered was Bector Foods uh, when we made this video on five interesting small cap stocks. And uh, Bector Food was available at a very reasonable valuation at that time. Uh, I think it was around 350 rupee when the leadership change happened and they were uh, planning to expand in the western zone and that story also played out really well and better almost became a three bagger and now it trades somewhere around thousand rupees <clears throat> but then that is history uh, dfm food has gone for delisting vector food is already a three bagger and in my view it's still it could be a good compounder but uh, i think the major gains and optionalities have been taken care from here more it will be a growth story based on the EPS growth rate. So question comes currently what is uh, you know interesting in the food and uh, you know uh, nearby segments. So before we discuss uh, these businesses the question is uh, why we like uh, food businesses why these kind of businesses are good businesses and that doesn't mean all the food companies are great companies but there are certain inherent reasons. So the first reason if you see consumption is something which will never go. I think when we look at the terminal value risk, that means it will the business survive for next five years, 10 years, 15 years. It is one of the sector or industries with least terminal value risk because technology can disrupt this or that. You are hearing that, you know, generative AI will kill the jobs, app economy will kill this sector, that sector, but whatever happens, if you don't leave food, if you eat कम चांसेस है कि आप पीना छोड़ोगे तो ये सब जो इंडस्ट्री होती है खाने पीने की जो इंडस्ट्री है चलता रहता है इट्स वेरी वेरी लेस डिसरप्टिव दैट इज फर्स्ट गुड थिंग सेकंड गुड थिंग इज लॉट ऑफ कंपनीज इन द स्पेस वर्क ऑन वेरी गुड वर्किंग कैपिटल एंड कैश फ्लोस बिकॉज़ दे वर्क ऑन अ कैश एंड कैरी मॉडल व्हिच मींस कि आप डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर को पहले पैसे लेते हो फिर सामान देते हो या अगर आप डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर को सामान दे रहे हो कि यू गो एंड यू सेल माय राइस और यू गो एंड सेल माय a floor or you go and sell my uh, you know snacks packet uh, either pay me in advance or pay me with uh, two three four five ten days of lag so the financial economics is also very good also these are not very very asset heavy industries again it differs the extent of asset heaviness differs a lot there are companies which are totally marketing companies there are companies which are man manufacturing plus marketing companies but still relative to other industries whatever points i'm talking about is little more generic and relative relative to other industries you still have decent financial economics when i say financial economics which means its balance sheets its debt equity ratio its evita interest ratio uh, its cash flow generation capability its working capital to sales and all the things and last there is growth opportunity because there are multiple ways for companies to grow the companies who have ability to grow there are multiple avenues to grow especially the small size companies i'm not talking about very big size companies uh, you know which have tried almost all the possible things but think about a small company which is present in let's say three four states they have scope of geographical expansion <laughs> they have scope of uh, you know food is one thing if we like a food we don't care if a 10 rupee packet has become you know 11 rupee or 12 rupee and earlier payment in cash was an issue because that chutta thing so that is why companies were putting the price maybe 4.99 or 9.99 but with all this upi and all i think even that risk is mitigated so the price and uh, increasing the price by 3 4 5 percent nobody cares about it if you are you know buying the food of your choice so they have a pricing power to increase the price then they can increase the SKUs, they can increase the product lines, they can leverage the brand and launch some more things. So there are multiple ways for the companies to grow. So these are the reasons why uh, I uh, always keep looking for good companies with good brand in this space, but provided the valuation is right. So when we discussed DFM food, there was a time because the valuation we felt was right. And again, 
uh, sometimes some of these stocks may not have momentum. I love when there is a momentum, but even when there is no momentum, but there is a very good value. I am somebody who is happy to wait for some of these stocks with patience. I don't care uh, who where market is going for one year. Uh, but uh, if my thesis plays out, then the money is bad. And that is how it has happened in some of the food companies, whether you take a DFM or you take a vector food. So now with that premise, let us look at some of the companies where I feel they may not be attractive. They might be a little attractive, but I think they're somewhere around attractive to fairly value. And there are certain optionalities in the business. There could be some chances of re-rating or some optionalities play out. Let's discuss them one by one. So the first business is LT Foods. A brief about LT Foods. So LT Foods is a company in the rice business. And even in India, there are two rice brands which are most popular. The first brand is India Gate and the second brand is Dawat. Dawat is the brand which LT Foods owns. And let me tell you, uh, it's not a company which is new to me. I have been tracking this company from 2016. And this is where in investment is very, very interesting. I had discarded this company between 2016 to 19 because my fear was this company will blow up its balance sheet and uh, uh, you know it will default. Also, please note all these videos, the blogs we write, the collaterals which we make, the analysis which we do, all the public work which we are doing now, we are collating everything into one free course on our website, learn.scientificinvesting.in. And it is available in the form of a free course. So if you register, you have all the content access at one place. So do make best use of it. But to my surprise, uh, to my surprise, this company really built on its brand. And what they have done in last six, seven years is they have grown in each of the markets globally, whether it's US, whether it's Europe, whether it's India, everywhere they have gained market share and they have become number one, number two player in each of these markets. Middle East is the only market where they are not penetrated, but I will come about it later on. And if you look at their last six, seven years of history, uh, they have become very, very efficient in terms of balance sheet. They have cleared their long-term debt. Uh, their interest coverage ratio is much more healthy. And they have built these very strong brands globally. In India, Dawat is the brand, but if you go in US, so the other part is in each country, they have tried to build a strong brand name. Also, they have forayed into multiple businesses. So they started with this rice business, premium basmati rice business. Also, they have mass basmati rice business. But slowly, they also got into organic food business. And they have also gotten into ready-to-eat business, which is convenience food. Now, in FMCG, convenience food is a big, big theme. Because the world is going, and especially countries like India and all, we are going for nuclear families where we have both husband and wife working. We don't have time and we want to eat something which is ready. Like if you go and if you eat uh, cornflakes or, you know, ready to eat poha or even let's say ready to eat biryani. So anything which you can, you know, uh, cook very quickly and conveniently with an element of some health and all. So all of that comes in ready to eat and convenience food. So they have gotten into this business. It's a new business, not a major revenue contribution, but these are the businesses which are growing at higher rate. So if you take the rice business, India globally, it might grow somewhere around 8 9%, whereas the convenience food segment will be growing at 25% plus segment. The other thing is, uh, this is a business which is much less working capital intensive. So rice business is a very working capital intensive business which means you need to age your rice. So basically, what happens is that you maintain the rice for a few days, you maintain the rice for a few days, you aging the quality to improve the quality. And that is why in these companies, you will see you have a very high inventory days. And my fear was these companies will generate lesser cash flow. But last six, seven years of data proves wrong because they have been, despite of being working capital intensive, they have been able to maintain good margins. They have been able to generate good cash flows. They have been able to pay their long-term debt and they have been able to improve their brand. They have been able to improve their return on equity, return on capital. And now as they are growing bigger in size, they have more and more capital for branding, deployment, and launch of new products and the new brands. So with LT Food, my sense is the rice business will continue to do well uh, because 
as uh, the per capita income of the country grows, more and more people would like to eat premium rice and that will drive the growth. So maybe a 8, 9, 10, 12% kind of growth rate the rice business can have. <clears throat> Organic business is more B2B. Uh, it will depend on how they keep on penetrating more markets, more countries, how it will grow. And it has some regulatory risks also. But uh, this business is also doing well. The third business, which is ready to eat and convenient food business, it is interesting because it is growing at 20 to 30% growth rate. They have more investment plans there. And the last point, it's not as working capital intensive as rice because uh, uh, you don't need to do that kind of aging and all. So with these three businesses combined, currently the company trades around 12, 13 PE. If you look historically, it will look like it's overvalued, but I leave it to you to decide what is the kind of valuation you want to give such companies, uh, depending on your feel, how long they can grow. I gave you the numbers, uh, you know, 8 to 12% for rice business, 20% plus for ready to eat business. Uh, the management uh, two, three years back said about the growth targets, ROE targets, they are on plan to achieve it. And looks like in next four to five years further, they will cross 20% ROE. Uh, they will get uh, one or two percent further margin improvement and the growth will come. So, I mean, the whether the stock will re-rate or not only, time will tell. The last thing which is there in LT Foods favor is if you look the Middle East, I think in last one year they have gotten serious about the Middle East. And uh, you will see there is a little bit of equity dilution which has happened. But the reason is uh, one of the food processing ministry bodies of Middle East has taken stake in these companies. <laughs> and they have some kind of tie-up where... Uh, they will, uh, this strategic equity stake will help them to get an entry into Middle East and grow their Middle East. And why Middle East is important? Because from rice consumption, I think in the world, this is one of the most important markets. So this was the only thing where uh, LT Food had not tapped the market and now they are aggressive about it. So this is about LT Food. The next business is another food company called ADF Food. Now, again, if we look at ADF Food, Till 2018, nothing interesting was happening in this business. If you see the last four or five years of growth, growth history prior to 2018, it was missing. They were spending more on the marketing cost and still they were not able to grow the revenue. But in 2018, the current CEO and uh, you know MD, he took charge as leadership position. He was there in the company and it was a family promoter driven company, but he took charge as the CEO and since then, there has been a lot of improvement in the company. Now, coming to this company, uh, this company is uh, more into ethnic food, uh, like your pickles and ready-to-eat food, frozen fruits like samosas, butter, tawadas, ready-to-eat like pav bhaji, dal makhni, pickles, chutneys, spices. And this company doesn't operate in India. 99% of the revenue of this company comes from exports. Now, my personal assessment about this company, I think they were everywhere. If you see, they tried to create eight, nine brands. And being a small 200 crore company, if you're trying to create eight, nine brands, brands are not made just by launching product, but you need to really invest in the brand marketing, go to market and all of that. So what I see is slowly, I think they have realized their mistake and they have closed some of the brands and they're become more conscious and they're trying to focus on those two, three brands, which is doing, doing really well. And uh, if we look, one of their flagship brand is Ashoka brand, which is export driven brand. Uh, almost 50% of the sales comes from Ashoka brand. So this brand is going, growing at 30% and they're focusing more on this particular brand to grow it further. If I talk in terms of business, I think they have two revenue sources. One is their own brand, which they sell, like Ashoka I mentioned. And the other business is distribution business. Distribution business, my sense is the margins are less, so, but they do this business more for relationship management so that with the retail stores, they can get shelf space and they can sell their own brands along with the distribution business brand, which they have taken from some of the Markiel FMCG companies. So if we look at the overall sales last year, FY23, this company did almost, uh, you know, 362 crore of uh, processing food business, which is their own brand. So almost 90 crore of distribution business. Uh, so almost 430, 440 crore kind of business. And this year they may do somewhere between 480 to, you know, 500 crore. 
And the uh, Ashoka brand will be almost at 250 to 270 crore brand, which they are working on. There are a few more brands like True Indian Soul, but the big driver right now is going to be Ashoka brand. Now, the question is uh, why this company is interesting. I think there are two, three reasons why it is interesting. One, since 2018, they have gotten their act together in the last five, six years. They have proven that, uh, you know, they can grow the business and there's an intent to grow the business. If you look at last one or two years of data, uh, the numbers may not look that great, but on a four or five year history basis, I think it's all double digit growth rate, which is there. So last five year CAGR has been around, uh, you know, 18% sales CAGR, 25% EPS CAGR. Uh, sometimes when there is a raw material price increase or there is a freight cost increase, that is the time when margins suffer. So margins is something which we should watch in these companies and there could be some short term pressure on margin and all. Also, the growth comes from capacity expansion. So they have done almost uh, 100 crore of de-bottlenecking of existing capacity and they'll be investing almost 75 crore of capex in the new capacity which will come in next 15 months. And these two together, if we look at the kind of fixed asset turnover ratio the company works on, I think these two together should take care of 200 crores of growth. So from next 500 crore to next 200 crore of growth, there is a possibility. Also, the Indian business currently is not at all contributing. It's hardly 1% revenue contribution. They have an aspiration to grow it to a 100 crore revenue stream in next few years. So uh, this is another new stream they want to focus and they want to you know, improve it. So the existing business, Ashoka brand is growing at 30%. The overall business is growing, even the distribution business is growing and there is a optionality of Indian business to grow. The other thing is so far in their export business, they didn't have access to a lot of supermarket chains. Uh, these were uh, more traditional, uh, you know, uh, traditional sales channels, traditional kind of stores where, you know, their brands were there. But I think recently they have gotten into, if I recall the name from Concall, they have access to all the Tesco stores, almost, I think, 700 stores, if I remember. Now, these things won't happen in three months or six months. So whatever I'm talking about, whether we talk of a re-rating, uh, in fact, let me share my experience of one of the first FMCG investment, which I did I think it was in Tasty Bites in 2016-17. Again, the company was interesting. It was fairly valued. And uh, in two years, I made a Forex and I thought I had made a lot of money. But I exited. And then when I look almost eight years down the line, the stock has given much, much more return. And sometimes re-rating, it takes two, three years. And when the market sees that the stock is performing, for last three years, four years, five years, six years, the re-rating happens. So it's all a question of personal style. But my point is don't take all of this as three months, six month thing. These are long-term things it will take out. It's not like the impact of these kind of supermarket uh, tie-ups uh, will show the result only in next three months. It takes time, but that is where the story is progressing. The story is progressing where first they got the house in order, then they started focusing on some of the brands, then they have grow got the growth back. Now, uh, the expansion-driven growth will come. Uh, then uh, they are getting into super uh, supermarket stores. Then they're trying to, uh, now time will tell whether they will build the Indian business or not, but they have the aspiration to grow there. So with all of this, again, uh, and given the stock is available around, I think, 18 times uh, EV EBITDA and almost uh, 30 times, uh, you know, P, which is, I feel is fair for a FMCG kind of business. Or, uh, you know, if they grow with all this in double digit and some of the optionalities play out, uh, again, it could be a decent compounder. Uh, some of the negatives I would like to highlight. So it's not a typical FMCG company. It's a manufacturing FMCG company. And usually manufacturing as FMCG companies are little asset heavy, uh, which you'll see in the numbers. But still, again, Common trades, almost debt-free balance sheet, very good return on equity, very good return on capital, less disruption risk, all of that growth avenues are there. More it was a question of execution and execution is happening. Uh, the other thing is the cash flow conversion are not that, it's not bad. I like, a, I like, I love a 70% plus EBITDA to OCF conversion. 
I am okay with 60%. This company is somewhere around 60%, but still relatively not at par with other FMCG companies. Uh, one of the reason being it's mainly export business. So if you see an export business, you will have a higher inventory days and working capital. Bill. So if they're able to build a parallel Indian business, I think that is again going to improve their working capital and the cash flows in the long run. So we discussed these two companies, LT Foods and ADF Foods. The third company which we are going to discuss is little different from food industry, but in similar, you know, food and beverages industry. So uh, we will cover the third company in the next video. Uh, you can take a guess and mention in the comment section, which is the third company. Or if there is a very interesting company in food and beverages industry, you can let us know which is the company you want us to cover and we'll try to cover in detail. Uh, but remember the rules remain same. We look at companies with growth, uh, with cash flows, with balance sheet, and with some kind of optionality. So do let us know if there are certain interesting companies, uh, you know, in this particular industry and we'll cover it. So if you like our channel, if you like our work, do subscribe, do share it with your friends and in your community so that we can reach out to more and more people. And uh, I will see you soon.